Hi, I'd like to continue talking about optimization with you. We left off with the open top box problem, and we had finished off with finding a function for the volume of the box with the input variable or the independent variable being the length of the side of the square we were going to cut from the corners of the original piece of paper. Here's the original piece of paper. It was eight and a half inches wide. It was 11 inches long. And we said that we were going to cut squares at a corner with length x. And all four of these squares are congruent. So this box, this piece of paper will now fold up nicely along these green dotted lines to create the open top box. So we're just about ready to take our function and graph it. But what I'd like to do first is just talk about the domain for x. And while you look at this function up here, the volume function that we have, it doesn't have any denominators, it doesn't have any radical expressions in it, which means that uh, from a mathematical point of view, we'd be allowed to plug in any value of x that we wanted, and we'd be able to compute a output. But not all those values of x would make sense in the context of this problem. So let me give you an example. If I decided to make the length of the side of the square in this upper corner bigger, then I might have the square I'm cutting out along those blue dotted lines. So you've got to be careful, because if I make this cut too big, like this red square, then the issue I have is there's not enough distance left in the upper right corner of, of the piece of paper to cut out another square of equal size. So, if you give that a little bit of thought, you'll realize that you cannot go past the halfway point of the length of the side of the piece of paper. So that means our domain for this question would be you can cut out a square whose length is slightly bigger than zero, but additionally the length of the square needs to be less than 8.5 inches over 2, or 4.25 inches. Now that we have a domain, we're ready to take this function v and put it into the calculator with this domain and graph it and see where the maximum value occurs. That's what we're going to do now. I'm going to use t84. I'm going to press y equals. And I'll make some comments about the T89. The T89, you got to do uh, diamond F1 to get to Y equals. So our function has open parentheses 11 minus 2x, close parentheses, times open 8.5 minus 2x, close times x. Now, your calculator will understand it if you don't put multiplication between the parentheses and so forth. Careful on the TI-89, TI though. If you put an x next to a parenthesis, it will think that there's a function called x, and it will go looking for it, and it won't find it. You'll get an error. So bottom line is, when you see a function that has x times some other expression, maybe a binomial inside some parentheses, make sure you put x times, and then you won't have an error. The next piece I'm going to do is go to window, and I'm going to make our domain. So x min is going to be 0, because we know that x represents the length of the side of the square. And the smallest square we can cut out is just have a length slightly bigger than 0. And our x max is going to be 4.25. Now, I sort of have an advantage by using this, this online calculator, this, this version called the TI Smart View, because if you look in the middle here, you can see a table. And in that table, I can see all my x values, and I can see the y values. And because I can see the y values, that means it'll help me figure out what y max would be. You're not going to have that luxury necessarily. So if you want, on the calculator, you can actually press. You can do second graph to look at the table and look at some of the y values in y1, and that'll give you a sense. I mean, I have a y value. Uh, when x is 2, I have a y value of 63. So when I go to my window now, I'm going to set y min to be 0, because I'm never going to have a volume less than 0. Uh, 
for y max, however, I'm going to go with 100. And for y scale, if you want, you might as well, I'm going to make it 10 so I can see little dash lines of 10 going up the side. Maybe every increment is 10. All right, now I'm ready. I'll hit graph. And here's a picture of my function. And clearly it has a maximum somewhere between, um, this is the max value right up here, it's somewhere between 1 and 2 is the ideal cut I should make for the length of the side of the square to yield maximum volume. That's what I'm going to do next. Figure that out, I'm going to do second calculate. And this is familiar from some of the earlier videos. I'm going to go down to number 4, maximum. Oops. And remember, left bound means go to the left of where you think the max occurs. On the TI-89, if you're using TI-89, you'd press F5, look for maximum, which is the fourth function down. And it's not going to say left bound. It's going to say lower bound. So lower means left. You hit enter one time. Um, the TI-84, as you can see here, it says right bound. The TI-89 will say upper bound. Upper bound means right. Go right of where this thing reaches the maximum. Hit enter. And then for a guess, you can do that if you'd like, but you don't need to. So it looks like I have a maximum value of y equals 66.148 um, cubic inches. And it happens when I use a cut of x equals 1.585 inches. So that's how we maximize um, a quantity by first starting with a contextual situation, modeling it with an equation like we did up here, picking out an appropriate domain like we did over here, and then using our calculator to get an answer. You should ask your teacher about how they would like you to express your answer. A full sentence would be ideal. So you could say something like this, that if we cut squares of length 1.585 inches, that will give us an open top box with a maximum volume of 66.148 inches cubed. Thanks for watching.